Welcome everyone to another Grandmaster God Guide and today we'll be covering knots. This is not how you should treat Nox. a queen. Now the reason I'm covering knots is because one, I haven't covered a mage yet, which someone politely um, let me know. Um, I was aware of it, but thank you for the reminder. And um, secondly, someone asked for knots, so... Kill two birds with one stone. Don't fear the night. Embrace it. Nox is very interesting. There's a few things not many people know us about her, so we'll Millions be going over that spawned. in this video. Now let us go do the normal thing. Let's travel the shoes. Back to all my abilities. And buy both relics. Alright. So, Nox is a mage. She does magical damage. Um, her passive is basically you gain 3% extra magical power uh, per ability up to 4 stacks. You see these candles on the bottom left there? You see they're not lit? When you cast an ability, they light up. Now, when you take, that's just simple, that's all it is, that's all the passive is. You gain 3% per ability you use up to 4 stacks. So up to 12%. But, if you take damage, the bigger damage you take, the candles dwindle. If you take 4 hits, all your candles will be blown out. That's important to note. I think it used to be... If you get hit, all the candles would um, reset, but I think they, um, I think they, um, I think they changed that. I don't know when though. Anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, let's go over a one called Shadow Lot. I'll bring it off for you. Lock extends a shadow forward, damage enemies. If the shadow hits an enemy card, it stops rooting and crippling them in place. Doing damage over time instead. Why does it say instead? Rooting and crippling them in place and dealing damage over time instead. Oh, if it is an enemy guard. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he changed it. Um, where... Let me show you real quick. This never used to be a thing. No one now hits minions. So that's why I was confused if it's seen instead. Um... So, it's a root. Cripple. So they can't like jump out of it and they can't move. And this is a very annoying ability to deal with. Um, if they have any momentum whatsoever, obviously they'll be stopped. If they're like, running and you root them, they get stopped. They can't move. Secondly, when she casts this, she can move. Um, it, she doesn't suffer any move speed penalty when she's casting this. And Nox always, even if you turn your camera, she always faces the god she's rooting. Did you see? <sighs> Another thing to note. She can cast relics while using her wand. So you can like... Let me reset my ages real quick. Not many people know that. Say if right. I'm comboing this guy. You can age us while doing damage. Now that is crazy, because... Because normally, if they're a hunter, they could normally just auto-attack you. Science. While they're in them. But you can like, literally... Say if you're against like a crit hunter... You just... You just age all the damage they'll be throwing at you. Um... Um, one thing to note, most abilities in this game suffer from something called diminishing returns. Um, this, I believe isn't, because it's not affected by crowd control reduction. So, um, if you have like, max crowd control, crowd control reduction, this route will still do the full duration. 
No, because the reason why I think this is a thing is because if they had CCR, like any amount of CCR, then you could just, as you see the root, if they had CCR and it was a thing that um, makes the root not last as long, they could just easily walk out of it. Say if the root ran out now, you could just run out of the two and then Nox wouldn't really be able to do any damage because her main damage is a combo of a two and a one. So I think that's why it's not affected by CCR. Oh yeah, this is important. Um, Nox is one. Always casts, no matter what CC you're under. I think, I think that is barring a silence. The silence is obviously cancel ability casts. Um, but if you're stunned, um, you can still cast this. Let me try and um. God, here. Let's try you there because he has a freeze. I will return. You see, He's still doing damage. <laughs> freeze me. This guy refuses to freeze me. Oh, now he tries. <laughs> okay. Um, let me, tr let me show you again. Free. <laughs> See? Take it from me. I did, I did show it the first time. I did want to do it again, but it's kind of hard to make AIs do what you want. Um, without, it's hard to show this really without a friend being in jungle practice to um, help me with this. So, um, if you're CC'd, you can still use the ability. So, it still carries on. Um, I think that's barring a silence, like Nox, not Nox, sorry, um, Isis silence, um, Anshile silence, stuff like that. I think then that cancels it. Um, what else about this ability? Yeah, like I said, no movement speed penalty while she's casting this. It's very useful because then you can juke without using it. Um, let's go over the two. Two is fairly simple. Throws, throws a, um, an engulf of darkness on the floor. Now they're silenced, meaning they can't cast anything when they're silenced. I mean, they can't cast um, Aegis, they can't cast um, um, any abilities, but I do believe they can still cast um, beads. Because if they couldn't, then, I don't know, it'd just be cringe, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, um, that's it, really. Short duration, silence. Anything in the area when it explodes, take damage. That's it. That's, that's it to the two. It lasts for two seconds. This lasts for uh, two seconds, meaning... It looks longer than two, doesn't it? One, two. Why does it say two seconds? Because to me, this looks like it's longer than two seconds. But it says two. Oh. Uh, anyway, that's. It's not really that important, anyway. When you play your enough, you get the timings in your head. So what most people do is, is they pop the two down and then they instantly use their wand, so root some into it. Now that is a very obnoxious combo, because if you don't have beads or anything, you'll take like three fourths of your health late game. You are squishy. Now, a tip I would use on playing Nox to hit the combo is to one, read the meaning of the enemy guard. And don't hesitate to use it. Some people hesitate. And like be miss like that. Just like pop you two and just aim for them. There's no real like actual solid advice I can do other than practice. Um read the movement. And then um sometimes it helps to have set up for um, have set up for this. So if you have like an Athena, if you um 
get them to taunt them and then you can freely do the combo. Um, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention, her one can be can <laughs> That didn't happen. Her one can be cancelled. If you don't want to carry on, you can just like... Because you're stuck, you can't cast anything else other than your relics in this um, state. So if you really need to dash out, cancel it and just dash away. Um, her three, Shadow Step. Nox dashes forward, dealing damage to all enemies. If she hits an ally, she leaps into her shadow, travelling with them. When Nox exits her shadow, she deals damage. Again, in a radius around her, Nox may cancel this ability early to exit the shadows. Now, if I switch team real quick. And I could dash in Soda. Eight seconds, right? I can cancel any time I want. Most people like to do this for damage, like you dash into like a, um, a friendly character, friendly guard, dash in, cancel it, show away to do damage for any gods that are nearby. Because if you wait the full duration, I highly doubt an enemy god's going to sit in this radius. Sometimes people like to um, do that for damage. Um, it is possible to do two instances of damage with this, the dash and the explosion both do damage. Um, how do I prove? I can't really show you because no, no like god is in position to um, prove that point. But I'll show you on, on this real quick. The dash, it doesn't stop the first god hit, it goes through and it does damage. And then, obviously, the radius explosion also does damage. Um, one thing I'd like to say is, if you're in Apollo, and he's all in, and he's in the sky, if you're, if the full 8 seconds expire while you're in the sky, you will not exit him until he lands. Um, even if the 8 seconds is up, you'll still be in the air with Apollo while he's all cast him, until he lands. Otherwise, you'd be like drop shipped from the top top of the map, and that's why. Um, else to know about the three? Oh, there's a very small interaction with Odin. I can't really show you, um, but if you just take my word for it, if Odin cages you, and say this say this lines the cage right, and and the um, friendly god is standing right here. You could dash to them, and it'll go into the um, into the um, god, so it gets you out of the cage. So um, that doesn't work for your mere wall or anything like that. I think that's strictly just for Odin cage, because the cage is so thin that the um, hitbox of this actually actually goes like it goes through the cage a little bit so that's important um obviously if you're against snowden let's go over her ult her ult is um what's it called again night terror a long range um ball of darkness i suppose and um it stops at the first thing hit of the minions so it stops at walls, it stops at um, gods. <laughs> See, it stops on the first thing it hits, other than minions. It still does damage to minions, I'm pretty sure. Let me just, yeah. oh yeah, I forgot. Change the team real quick. <laughs> yeah, it still does damage. You're CC immune during this, meaning no CC can affect you while casting this. So, and a tip I'd like to note is you don't have to hit them in the exact middle of the um, of the ball. As you see, at the end there's like a little circle, right? So if I was to hit this wall, that Odin still takes damage from the AOE. You don't have to hit them head on with this. So if you notice, like they're near a tower, um, hiding behind that tower, you can like, why? Oh yeah, is it because yeah, it's an enemy tower. This goes through towers. Oh yeah, it does. 
think it. I think it doesn't go through friendly towers. Let me just uh, myth bust that out real quick. <laughs> oh no, it goes through um, towers and stuff. It doesn't go through your mirror wall though. I tell you that for sure. So forget the thing about the tower. If if they're near a wall, essentially, you can just like you know explode it and hit everyone in the area. One very very good thing about this ult that not many people take advantage of is that when you hit an enemy god with this ability, they are weakened, meaning they do 50% less damage. And I'll show you this real quick. Damn it! Change team. Again. Right, so Neath, right? Oh. How much damage do all those do? 52, right? I, I am so trash at this game. How did he even miss that? <laughs> oh god. Mistakes happen. Oops. Mistakes happen twice. I was meant to go to reset cooldown, not re reset level. I guess it doesn't really matter because. Anyway, let's just forget that happened. 52. 31. She does 50 percent less damage for 5 seconds. Honestly, in team fights, I'll just throw this right at the start of the fight. Like, just hit the... Try hit the back line if you can. This does a lot of damage as well. And the... Oh, it's 40 percent. I sworn it was 50. Either way, it still does damage reduction. Hit, hit like, the, um, the back line. Like a hunter or something, they'll be doing a lot less damage than they normally would. You can also use this to like snipe people if they're running away. Yeah, you, know, you can catch them with it. Um, there's one thing I want to test real quick. No, it doesn't apply to fire. Though. Um, I, I think it's because Fire Giant can't be CC'd, neither can Golf Fury, so... Does it work on minions? I don't know, let's, let's find out together, I guess. Minions can be CC'd, so... <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't work on minions. It's good to note. These, these episodes also help me learn new things as well with the characters. Um, have a look. What else can I say about this character, really? Um, I'm going to show you the, how she clears, really. It's pretty simple. I need to change the team for this. No, if you're not... Up until on the wave. You can only wait until the group top like this so you can hit them all. So you don't run out of it. Because sometimes you'll pop your two and then the archers will the archers will like um walk out of it. If you pop it near the back, sometimes no or the melee, sorry. Um her autos do knock back as well. Like pretty much all gods. I was thinking of something. What was I thinking of? Oh. Make sure when you're clearing. Say if I cast it here, right? If you have if you hit the enemy god before you throw your two on the wave, the archers will stay where they are hitting you. Um so make sure you keep an eye on the archers because you could um because normally people would like Pop the two down to where they're gonna run. So, um, so keep that in mind. Um, combos with um, knocks. The main combo is a two-one. If you can't hit this combo, um, you'll be doing not much as knocks. This is a feast or famine character. If you hit your shit, she's really strong. If you can't, um, then you're not gonna do much. Um. What else could I say? 
Um, sometimes you can do this on both, and once your combo's done, bash them. Because they'll be rooted, right? They'll be rooted. Meaning you get like a pretty much guaranteed uh, dash after the root ends, unless they jump instantly. And the only way we can really do that is if they have instant cast on. Silence. That's a lot, a lot of damage you can throw out. And if that doesn't kill them, just throw the ball at them. But sometimes I like to start with the with the ult for the um, damage reduction. They do less damage. Um, builds for Nox. Um, you can either go Conduit Gem, Perfect. Conduit Gem, or uh, Sands of Time. They're the two main mage items right now. You don't really want to go Vampiric Shroud on her because she doesn't have like very good of set of abilities for life stealing with the um, like unlike Anubis for instance. Um. So, honestly, up to you. Conduit Gem, Sands of Time, Eva's good. Um, I'd go Sands of Time because I like it. The more combos you get with Nox, the better. And it's very, very, very annoying for the enemy to deal with. Then, if I'm playing mid, I'd go Tier 1 Rod. And I'd go into Lifesteal Boots. I'll show you why in a minute. And I'd go into Rod to Perfect. Or, you can go... This build, um, sorry, go tier, tier 1 rod again, tier 1 rod, then cooldown boots, and then back into Chronos Pendant. This gives you full CDR early game. Now one thing to note, this isn't that great late game because you're overcapped on CDR already, which means you, just, you can't build items really, you can build Soul Gem and Spirit Desolation if you want, but you'll be overcapping, and it's not a bad, I wouldn't say... It's the worst thing in the world overcapping, like you like I don't know. Um, it's the end of the world, but it isn't. You can if you want, but I don't recommend it because you're losing value. Um So I'd normally go like uh, tier one chronos pendant. I mean yeah, tier one chronos pendant. Dangerous. I like Life it. Steel Boots, back to Rod. And I'd then you can go like Deso. If you want, I'd go, I'd, I'd go Spear the Magus really, then I'd go into like Soul Gem, and then finish up with like Karen's Queen or Ascent Pen Item. Perfect. Um, you could go Obshard if you want, um, and you go back into Pendulum of Ages, this gives 20% CDR, that gives 10%. And then when you sell your boots, you can go like defense if you need it. Go mantle if you want. Okay then. Um, you could go. Um, if you if you, they have a lot of crit, you could even respect armor. If you if you really want to. No right or wrong answer. Um. What other power items? Um. I wouldn't really recommend... I mean, you could go Ethereal Staff if you want. I was going to say, I wouldn't really recommend Soul Reaver on this character. I'll tell you why now, because Dangerous. this character like mainly only hits one god. Right? So you're popping Soul Reaver, and both of those hits. And your dash is... R the only real ability that's going to hit more than one person is your ult. Now, I only really like Soul Reaver on gods where you can proc it multiple times on one ability on multiple gods, say like Raijin or um who else? I wouldn't, I wouldn't really say Scylla. Um Yanus. I mean you can hit more than one person with his two, but you know, I, I really like it on gods. Um you can hit multiple gods with the ability. Um so then you Oh see, before you saw your boots with extra speed. And um and finish off with whatever else you want really. If you want you could go do more if you want loads an extra loot of power. Honestly, no real bad real bad option. Um build I really like Um is Conduit Gem. Perfect. 
Tier 1 rods. Back into cooldown boots. As the Huey. Spear of the Magus. Um, and then from here you could go. If you want CDI, you could go Chronos Pendant. Dangerous. I like it. Uh, you could even go double flat pen if you want. Uh, you... Divine Ruin's kind of hard to proc on. I mean, it's not hard to proc on that. So it's just if you don't hit your abilities, it's not going to be very useful. Um, a spear, extra, down, extra cooldown, Chronos Pendant. Um, I might just. I'd probably just go Chronos Pendant here and finish up with like. Obsidian Shard or something. Then I'd go back into Gemma Focus. I've heard Gemma Focus because it pairs well with her pa with her passive. Silence. See, I'm getting percent power here, and I'm getting percent power from my passive. And this gives three percent per stack, right? Yeah, three percent damage increase. Yeah, three percent magical power here, which essentially is. Um, I mean, I guess it isn't because damage increase means your well, damage increases, obviously. Whereas magical power just means you get more power, um, obviously. I think it pairs really well. Because then, if you have zero stacks of your passive and you have Gemma Focus, your stacks are the same time, right? And plus, with Spear the Magus, it's the same 0.5% increased damage, and with Rod Duty, you get 25% additional magical power. Means the gods below 50% HP. So that's a lot of percent, right? How much damage I just did? First blood! Darn. Also, let me show you never be afraid. Just to do this. That literally That's chunks them. Enough. They were so right? eager to kill you. Don't be afraid just to throw the ult, throw the ult. Um Some people can go tank Nox, but Hey, says will shut down. I'll be done by that anyway. Some people wanna go tank Nox. Mm. I don't think it's really. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's terrible, but hmm. if you're gonna go tank Nox, I guess you go Sentinel's Gift. I don't know, Gauntlet Thieves, but then then again, you'd want to go damage because you're picking Nox. So, I don't know. You could go tier one Druid Stone. Um, back into Boots, whichever one you want, and Stone to bind him because if you just pop the two. It's props, stone of binding, even if they're not getting damage from the Six of Silence. Um, also, one thing about. Oh, let me just finish this build real quick then. I'd go Gauntlet. Grid win for more cooldown. And then, um. You could finish off with like a damage item, I don't know. Rod, if you really want. Um. You go mantle if you want to be more cringe. You know, something like this. That's how this late game, because this doesn't have, isn't that good late game. Let's have Bleach Stone and sell boots like for it. either another damage item. You could even be un super annoying and go Jam of Isolation, <laughs> where you can just ult people and they're really slow during the duration of this. Um. The reason why Tag Knocked isn't terrible is because um, her ult does flat damage de decrease on, on people. It doesn't require any magical power scaling at all, so that's good for team fights. And her combo is really good setup. Um, I wouldn't really recommend it unless like you're really good at the character. Um, also, something I'd like to show you is Magi's Cloak. Okay then. When you get CC'd with this hard CC'd with this cloak around you, it, it glows and it gets taken off you. Let me show you real quick. Yeah, right. 
You see how it just goes? Now with Nox, the two is classed as a hard TC because it's a silence. If you have Mage Eyes Cloak, just pop it, just pop that this round and it pops the Mage Eyes Cloak straight away. Silence. You don't even need to do damage or anything, just pop it. This gets rid of Mage Eyes Cloak really well. That's why Mage Eyes Cloak isn't that great against Nox because you can just be like over here. Silence. Um, sorry. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, what do you think? Is that it for Nox? Yeah, that's it for Nox, really. I mean, there's some things some people don't know, like I showed you. You know, you got the wall and you can cast your elixir in this. What the point where if you dash into someone who's in the sky, you will, um,. You will follow them until they land, even if the duration gets um, finished. Also, what I like to do with Nox is if someone's backing on my team, and they're close to backing, I would just uh, dash into them so you get backed with them. Hello Biscuit. Sorry, my dog just uh, cloned the room. So, for instance, if this Odin's gonna back, see if like, he's one second before backing, I can dash into him and I get taken to the base with him. That's a good, that's a good tip. That's it, really. Um, look at over these notes to see if there's anything I've missed. Oh, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this Nox guide. If I missed something, please let me know, and... Please let me know what uh, god you want to see next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.